Let's start at the beginning with Delphine Sellers, who's the executive director of UCAN. Hi, it is my pleasure to share with you that UCAN started in 2016. That is when we became a nonprofit in April. However, in 2017, after realizing that we needed to do something as an organization that could help other people, we decided to uh, look for land. Land where we could create a farm and give people access to the outside. What we did, because I served on their board, was I actually approached the Triangle Land Conservancy. And I asked them if they had property that we could possibly develop and create uh, an establishment where people could come and learn about agriculture and create communities among themselves. Thankfully, they did have the property for us. And here we are now standing on what can called the Catawba Trail Farm, but uh, for the public records, TLC calls it Snow Hill 4. We actually started working on this property and developing this farm in January uh, of 2018. Our goal at the time was to clear enough land, create a garden, and actually plant by spring of 2018. Well, uh, we came out here with our little hatches and our hand saws and so forth, determined as a small group that we were gonna clear this heavily uh, wooded area. We soon found out that we needed to acquire some professional help, which is what we did. We contracted with a, with a small company uh, to come out and clear the land for us, making sure that all old growth trees that were possible could stand and we used every, all the materials that was a result of that, including the wood, we mulched the limbs, and we incorporated them into the garden. Your question may be, did we plant by spring? No, we didn't, but we did plant by early summer. Hey, we're harvesting. Yes. Beautiful radish. One of the interesting things about this property is we uh, are zoned by two governmental entities. When you walk up the trail, on your right side is what was once the agriculture area, when this was an operating farm some 70 years ago. It is zoned by the city. The left side, which is the side that we're standing right now and was traditionally or historically the pasture side of this farm, this is zoned by the county. When we initially started, uh, because uh, being a very small nonprofit and just beginning uh, trying to do something major, such as reclaim an old farmstead, we decided it was best for us to start on the county side, where you have your old growth trees and you have some of the old buildings. This allowed us to focus on not only just creating a garden, but allowed us to focus on saving some of the old buildings that we could possibly save. So. It's really interesting to work with two governmental entities, but it all worked out for the best. One last question I have. Why would you tell someone about the Catawba Trail Farm or you can? Why should we come out here and volunteer or have a bed and plant? It still back to the reason that we exist. You can, which is stands for Urban Community Agronomics, our mission is to reduce food insecurity, is to increase the health of our community, individuals, as well as the, the entity of community. It is to make sure that our kids succeed in school. All of those things can be learned here on the Catawba Trail Farm. You can teach math by learning how to plant. Kids and young adults as well can learn the, the skills of agriculture. You can learn carpentry. So it is good to come out here because the wealth of knowledge that one can acquire for your personal use as well as for your career and future endeavors, all of those skill sets can be introduced and are learned here at the Catawba Trail Farm. <laughs>
which has been in existence since the 1700s. You need to know that the Catawba Indian Trail runs all the way down to the Little River Tributary. If you cross the river and go north, you will run into Horton Grove. If you go further, you will run into Stagville. Stagville is one of the premier historic plantation sites here in North Carolina. On the Catawba Trail Farm, it is noted that the oldest grave site dating back to the 1700s is on this property. It was Mr. William Johnson, his wife, and his five children. Rhonda Michael is a plot owner at UCAN. Rhonda, can you share the history of William Johnston? Sure, I'll be glad to. William Johnston was born in 1737 in Scotland. He acquired 400 acres in what was then Orange County, where we're standing now, which is now Durham County, and established Snow Hill Plantation. He developed the land. It had rich history. He owned um, Little River Store, which was a really popular trading post that was at the intersection of what's the Indian Trading Path, which later was Hillsborough Road, and New Hope Road, which later was University Drive. Um, and back in those days, if you can imagine, the trail had so much action, you know, horses, lots of foot traffic, lots of trading going on. So Mr. Johnson married um, a lady named Anne, who was 10 years his senior. Uh, she passed away in 1769. Um, they had several children, but only one survived, a daughter named Amelia. When Mr. Johnston passed away in May of 1785, in his will, he stated that he wanted a burial spot with his wife and children, which is located right behind me and he has set aside an amount of money to create a monument for his family to all be there together. He also dedicated an acre of land around the monument that he wanted to be a family cemetery, but with Amelia being his only child and her moving to Kentucky, we doubt seriously anyone else is buried here. There is um, one gentleman in Los Angeles named Kent Alves who was the fourth great-grandson of William Johnston. He has been in contact with Delphine Sellers, and he's so excited that UCAN is really grasping the history of this old land and remembering his grandfather um, the way that they are. And it's, it's just really cool to see all of this being developed and used to really progress and help the Durham community in so many ways. LaShawn Edward is a UCAN board member. LaShawn, can you tell me how many buildings were on the land when UCAN took over the property? Yeah, so when UCAN took possession of the land, we noticed that there were several buildings that had to be uh, deconstructed um, due to its state and instability to stand itself. So there were roughly about seven buildings that were left standing by the time we took possession, starting with the mule stable or the horse stable that had to be deconstructed. And then also there was a shed right next to it that had collapsed over by our chicken coop area. Um, we call the building our CTF greenhouse. 
And uh, what's unique about this particular building is we discovered that there, there was a person that lived inside this house, um, just uh, taking care of the animals that were here during that time. Uh, we noticed that there were several personal items in there, like some shoes, and we saw a few windows and also an old fashioned heater. So our three other buildings that we have is the Millwright House, which was primarily used to store tools and also repair tools for the farm. Um, we also discovered that there was an old tool called a, uh, a manure spreader that they used to spread manure um, on the farm back in the day. Also, we have a corn crib, which that was used to store grain and also food to feed the livestock but we actually repurposed that building for our intergenerational program, and meaning that we wanted to pass down our knowledge, skills, and wisdom to generations coming to uh, deliver the tradition of farming. And uh, going back to the Millwright House, there is a sign that says um, R.H. Wright, 1895. It's historic to the uh, property ownership of this land, and uh, we're looking to restore that sign. Um, but then also there's a shed across the road there that we weren't sure exactly what it was used for, but we did see some metal pieces in there. So it could have been used for like tool storage or um, just a warming area if the, if the weather was cold during that day or something like that. And uh, we're also looking to restore that building too. We have Quentin Pettiford here today. He's a UCAN board member. Quentin, what are some of the other unique things on the property? Resident bees. On our property, we had bees for many years before we even came. For about 70 years, some people even may say, but we, no one really knows. We were trying to cut down an old oak tree and we found bees inside. We wanted to figure out how we could extract the honey. So we looked, contacted one of our local beekeepers. So the beekeeper told us we had to cut down the limbs, but we were told that it may kill some of the bees because that's our only way in. So we decided let be what we could be. They've been here forever, we'll let them stay. One day during the spring, we hope to catch them swarming. And when they swarm, we maybe hopefully lead them to one of our hives and strengthen one of our hives. Thus, we'll still have a strong population of bees on our farm. So what else have you found on the property? We have several stumps. One of our freshest stumps is by our mill house. We plan to level it out and for a seat and put tables around for children to come, sit down, relax, and do activities. We have another one. We plan to let nature take its course. It has lion's mane growing on it and other medicinal mushrooms. And our last one, we have, we just cut the limbs off of it and is a little chill point where um, birds come. We have turkey buzzers and native birds that come and warm up and cool down. The Catawba Trail Farm needs to become self-supporting. Right now, one of the downsides is that UCAN needs to be able to hire people and all of our staff are volunteers to sustain and leave a workable legacy of what we're doing for future generations. We need to be able to pay staff. We need someone who is invested in the future and success of the Catawba Trail Farm. For the moment, we primarily reach out to volunteers and pay contractors to complete a specific task. UCAN is proud to offer agritourism at the farm. It is one of our goals to help preserve rural lifestyles and landscape and offer the opportunity to provide sustainable or green tourism within the community. People will be able to visit historical buildings, the community garden, and the farming community as a whole. Our motto is creating communities one seed at a time. We have a variety of opportunities. So helping volunteering at the Catawba Trail Farm can be unique. You can come on site and to cut wood, plant pollinators, help do construction, and help us manage our water system. The things that can be done here on this property are amazing. It is a non-traditional farm ran by a group of non-traditional individuals who happen to be all minorities and primarily 
minority females. It is a beautiful, peaceful property where we engage with kids from organizations in Durham and Raleigh. Jack and Jill, Boy Scouts of America, Partners for Youth Opportunities, Durham County 4-H Seeds, to name a few. Because of our engagements, we are becoming known to the community and people are embracing our mission, activities, and goals. Sabre Morris is the Vice Chair of the UCAN Board. Sabre, what are the current expansion plans for the farm? We have a lot going on, especially centered around expansion. Part of our original plan was to provide a space where individuals, particularly minorities, who are interested in learning about agriculture from a lot of us seasoned people here at the garden. This will give them a place to come out and learn, grow, and raise vegetables to support not only themselves, but their families. Some of those individuals are often considered returning citizens. A returning citizen is basically an individual who made mistakes in the past and they're having a hard time trying to get back on their feet as far as employment. Our goal is to clear two acres of land and use it for agriculture development to ensure that UCAN will remain sustainable with planting, growing, and selling vegetables. A portion of the land will be divided into a section of at least an eighth of an acre to accommodate a maximum of five beginning farmers. This will allow them to learn to grow and plant their vegetables. They can work together cooperatively farming and be able to sell their produce in a CSA or even a farmer's market and be able to support themselves. They'll be working as a co-op without the expense as far as land because land is expensive. The plan is for them to do this for a maximum of two years, which will allow them the time to work collectively and look for property to either rent or sell. We can bring in a new crew of individuals who want to learn and we'll use this as a training ground for new farmers. Agriculture is intertwined in the foundation of African American history. The connection of the Black diaspora to agriculture is one of pain and exploited labor, but also a living legacy of strength and resistance. And Catawba Trail Farms and Urban Community Agronomics carry on the Black tradition of resilience and self-determination through farming. In a postmodern world in which the majority of our food system is structured in a complex web of globalized exchange, it is difficult for us to feel connected to how and where our food is produced and how these processes reflect our relationship to the earth. But spaces like Catawba Trail Farms allows the opportunity for us to heal our collective conversation with the landscape and remember that the possibilities for growth, change, and independence are ever present when we invest our time, resource, and attention into nurturing sustainable land tenure and community organizing. UCAN is a community organization that gifts Durham with the opportunity to rebuild our awareness of our interdependence on the land and on one another. <laughs>